Section 4.4 deals with isosceles triangles. If you recall, an isosceles triangle has at least three equal sides. Well, in actuality, if we have a three equal side triangle, we're not going to call it isosceles. What are we going to call it? We're going to call it equilateral. So here when we're talking about isosceles triangles, we're talking about a triangle with two equal sides. Okay? All right, in an isosceles triangle, the two sides that are equal are called the legs of the triangle. The terminology we're introducing here today is very important. You need to be able to identify these pieces because we're going to learn theorems and postulates that use these words. And so if you don't know where they are, you're going to be lost. The third side is called the base. It has a complete different measure. The angles that are next to the base are called the base angles. And the third angle, which is at the top, not necessarily, but it's between the two equal sides, is called the vertex angle. Okay? Then none of this applies. Well, yeah, it would. It would. You'd still have base angles. They just, they'd all be equal. Okay? So, what does that mean? Well, I'm about to go. All right, the first theorem that's presented in section 4.4 says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, which would give us an isosceles triangle, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So if you look at our picture, if the leg equals the leg, which two angles are opposite those two legs? The base angles. So according to this theorem, in an isosceles triangle, the base angles are congruent. If there are two equal sides, there are two equal angles, okay? And it's always going to be the legs and the base angles. Yes. Now, this postulate helps us figure something out, say like this. If I give you this picture, by putting the tick marks on these two sides, I have indicated that I have a what kind of triangle? An isosceles triangle. Since these two sides are equal, then that means that this bottom must be the base, correct? So these are my base angles, which are equal, equal to each other. So what is the value of x? 70. 70. We could also use that information for something like this. By identifying that this is an isosceles triangle, my base angles are here and here and they equal each other and since I know that the vertex angle is 50 I have a 130 degrees left to play with divided by 2. Divided by two. So each one of these would be 65 degrees. Okay? Because they have to be equal. Because the three angles have to add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so that's what that theorem helps us to do. By just knowing that there are two equal sides, we also know that there are two equal angles. And we know exactly where to find them. They're the angles opposite the sides. Okay? Alright, our next theorem says the same thing. It's just the converse of it. 
it says if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. Stop writing at the black squiggly because I want to show a picture to show you what this is saying and how it can help us figure things out. If two angles are congruent, then two sides are also congruent. So this basically depends on what you know first. Suppose I draw a triangle. And I asked you now to find the value of x. Because I have indicated to you that there are two equal angles in this triangle, then we know that the sides opposite those angles are also equal. So what is the value of x? 12. 12. Okay. So we could have known that the sides were equal and figure out the angles, or if we know the angles are equal, we can figure out the sides. Yes? They won't always have the tick marks. Okay? Well, they'll have to have one set. Either the two angles or the two sides. Or the, they'll have measures that are equal. For instance, if instead of those tick marks, say... I said that this was 60, no, 50 and 50, and I'm asking for the value of x. Well, these are equal, aren't they? So that means the sides are equal. So x is 12. Okay. All right. Now, there are three other corollaries in this section, but we have already written them down, and these are what they are. First one says... An equilateral triangle is also equiangular. Okay. We've already written that down. Second one is the converse. An equiangular triangle is also equilateral. We already have that. Third one says, if a triangle is equilateral, then all three angles measure what? 60, 60 degrees. We already have those three. I'm not going to make you write them down again. But this is the fourth one that we haven't had. Please underline the words that I have underlined because each one of these is very specific and tells us something very specific. The bisector of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is perpendicular to the base at the midpoint. Here's where knowing all of our definitions is very important, because if we don't, this is just a bunch of Hebrew. Russian, Spanish, whatever. It's something else. Write that down, and then I will show you a picture, and we'll see exactly what we're, what we're dealing with. Okay, what is a bisector of an angle? It, by, it cuts it in two equal parts. It cuts it in two equal parts. Where's the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle? Okay, so I want you right now on your paper to draw an isosceles triangle. Then draw the bisector of the vertex angle. And it says that that line is perpendicular to the base. So indicate what that means at the midpoint. So what else does that mean? Write it down. And I already have the picture up. 